Now the next layer after after transport layer is network layer. Now network layer, data link layer, and physical layer. These three layers comes under the category of hardware layers. Now the main reason is there are some specific hardware devices gets involved in these layers. Just like we have some uh, network layer is works based on completely based on IP addresses. It is responsible for end-to-end -end transmission of data from one network to another network. Like take an example, uh, you have some users here, 192.168, a uh, one-door network is want to communicate with two-door network here. Now the packet reaches the router, and router will do what? It's do routing, which means this is what happens in the network layer. And the router is a device which works in this network layer. Now it's going to identify the destination based on the IP address, destination IP address based on the network IDs. And that's the reason we call the IP address as a layer three address. Why? Right? Because the identification of the devices based on the IP happens in this layer. And the major job on the network layer is routing. So when you talk about routing or routers and routers are the devices which works in this layer, now we call this as layer three devices. That's what we call as layer three devices, nothing but they do some routing kind of job. And it's going to identify the logical addressing and determine the best path based on the different types of routings we use. Static, default, dynamic kind of routings. And all the routing protocols comes under this category again. They all call as layer three routing protocols because they identify the devices based on the IP addresses. And they decide the best route because if you say RIP, RIP decides the best route based on the hop counts, something like that. They all uh, will, uh, will do the job and this entire process comes under network layer. And there are some other protocols like routed protocols. Now there's a difference between routing protocols and routed protocols. They both comes under the category of network layer. The routing protocols will decide only the best path. It decides the best path, how the, how the packet has to be forwarded outside the LAN through via router. And the routing routed protocols are actually your carriers like TCP IP protocol. It's a, it's a carrier protocol. So IP protocol is a carrier which, I did, which is a base network based on this IP network we are, we are communicating, right? Similar way, we can have some other, other based protocols like IPX, Apple Talk, OSI. These are all comes under routed protocols category where they act as a data carriers, whereas the routing protocols will decide the best route. Now, the next layer is network uh, data link layer. Now, when you talk about uh, any switch, if you just uh, think about a switch, we need to understand it's a data link layer. Uh, and it, it, it identifies the device. Now, switches works in this layer, switches, and they identify the device based on the MAC address. Now, if you remember in the basic, basic switching technologies, we have seen that switches are much more intelligent devices because they can identify the device based on the MAC address, on which port number, what is the MAC address connected, they can maintain one table called MAC table. In that table, they, they maintain the information about the MAC on which port. So it works based on the layer two address. That's what we call as MAC address as layer two address. And the switches, we call them as layer two devices because they, they forward the traffic based on the MAC address. Um, they don't identify the device, they don't identify IP addresses. But internally, there is a protocol called ARP, which will convert the IP to MAC but the actual forwarding happens based on the MAC address here. The MAC address, uh, that is a major job is to identify the device based on the MAC address. And also it will do some error correction here by, by checking the frames for with something called CRC check, cyclic redundancy check. And if, if any of the frame is, uh, is having some issues, in that case, it will ask for a reason. It's going to drop that. That's something what happens called as error correction also happens. And also it uses some encapsulation kind of things like framing, dot one q encapsulations also. These are all the things that happens in your data link layer and we call it as a layer two. And then once the router, now it's something like this, you know, router sends, router sends to next router, that's what layer three job. And the router will identify the device in the LAN. Now this process is complete your layer two job. This is complete layer two job. That's what data link layer defines. Now the layer three network layer defines what happens in the WAN, mostly the router routing kind of stuff. And then finally, the last layer is the physical layer. Now physical layer, it defines the transmission of the data over the wire, the physical transmission of your binary data. 
Now the entire information, whatever you have sent, it will be converted into your binary. That's a binary format. And these binary signals will go as electrical signals. If you are using some copper wires, maybe your UTP cable or coaxial cables, these binary signals will convert into either electrical signals or it will convert into light signals if you're, if you're sending the information over a fiber cable and then or it will convert into into your radio frequency signals the wireless signals if you're using any wireless medias now the physical layer is going to define the electric mechanical and the functional class specifications on the devices on the media say especially where you uh, physical transmission of your information and there are some devices like uh, wireless devices the coaxial cables and the fiber cables and the hub also comes under layer one device because it just receives the signals in the form of zeros and the ones and simply pass on the information to all the remaining devices so hubs modems repeaters and all your transmission medias like cables or wireless devices they all comes under comes under physical layer so they deal with the actual physical transmission of your information how it has to go now when you talk about the actual flow of the information here now let's try to understand the complete all the layers combining into one now when your when your user is sending some information let's take an example now this user is sending the information and then this user is receiving the information so when he's sending the actual initiation happens from application layer application layer provides an interface and then presentation layer defines a format for the data and then session layer will session layer will create and maintain and terminate sessions now which means up to here it will be in a form norm of data only but once it reaches the transport layer the transport layer is going to add the data the information whatever you are sending it will be added with some extra header information now in that extra header it will add some sequence numbers uh, the the multiplexing information, port numbers, TCP UDP information, whatever is required for the controlling the flow of information, and that format we call it as segment. Now segment will have all the information added, and that's the reason we call as segments the format of your data with the data and extra header information. And once it reaches the router or any any specific routing device, which means once it reaches the network layer. It's going to add that segment. Segment is added with some source and destination IP addresses. And this format of the data, we call it as a packet. Now, whenever I say packet is coming, packet is going, it means that the, the data is added with some, some information and then that is in the transport layer. And in, the trans, in, the, in this layer, in, in the network layer, it's going to add some source and destination IP addresses because the actual lookup in the network layer happens based on the IP, it's not going to see the inside informations. Now that format we call it as packet. And then reaches the next device that is your data link layer. Now once it reaches the switch or a data link layer, there's a protocol called ARP which will convert your IP address into MAC address and it's going to add some extra information again here with some source and destination MAC addresses. What it is going to do? It is going to add some source and destination MAC address and this format of the data we call it as uh, frames now in the switching concepts if you remember we we just refer them as frames are coming frames are going because uh, in the normal terminology we call them as frames now here we call as packet or datagrams here we call as frames or cells and then uh, once it reaches the physical wire or the physical cable it's going to transform into zeros and the ones Simply this complete frame information is transformed to zeros and the ones sent through the transmission media and then reaches the other transmission media and then it is going to frame back again into, into data link layer through the switch in the form of frames and then it will go back and it will remove that particular MAC address information again it will add that packet and it will forward based on the IP and then the transport layer will, will see the segment information and forward control the flow information and then finally it reaches the end device in the form of a normal data now if you observe here when your user is sending he is sending the data and he is receiving he is receiving in the form of data but the actual transformation of your information is happening in your devices and this is something what OSI layers defines in detail 
like what happens inside your net inside your uh, uh, network when you are sending and receiving the information so that's what exactly this osi model is going to define not uh, exactly the same way but in, in each every case but this is a general kind of uh, general kind of uh, process which, which is going to happen in case of tcp osi models now there are some specific protocols which works uh, in the physical layer there are some ethernet token ring protocols comes under this category in these two protocols we can say these two comes under this category and there are some ip icmp protocols when you talk about ip icmp uh, arp protocols they all comes under the network layer category in fact and then in, in case of you know uh, in case of network layer and then session layer protocols now these are all protocols comes under the application layer again http ftp smtp a presentation layer defines the format and the session layer is going to uh, create maintain and terminate sessions and the transport layer uses tcp or udp protocols now that's what exactly osi models is going to define how the communication process happens between the two networking devices and in practical when you talk about practically implementing we use only tcp ip protocols and the protocols which we discussed already in detail some of the protocols here dhcp dns and then we have seen some tftp smtp protocols some of the main protocols we discussed now at the end this entire tcp ip model or the OSM model defines the format, how the communication happens. 